Hi everyone, it's Vanessa. In this video I wanted to wrap up the graphic novels I've been reading as well as two fiction books that I read uh, in the month of February for the most part. I'm going to talk about four graphic novels and the first one is Goldie Vance Volume 4 which finally I got to. Overall I still really like this series. I think it's just a light-hearted thing that you'll pick up when you're kind of in the middle of things or when you just want something that's just more chill. Of course we're still following Goldie as she solves mysteries and crimes. In this one we're following a mystery of a music festival that's going all wrong. There's bands missing. There's kind of this plot where the Soviets are turning off all the electricity in the town and Goldie's trying to figure out who's behind it and also issues that she's having with her girlfriend at the moment. That's pretty much kind of the plot of what's going on in Goldie Vance. I still really like the characters and that's what draws me to this series. I love learning about Goldie and what her and her friends are up to. I definitely didn't think that the mystery was all there for me this time around. I didn't really get to understand or know the bad guys so it's kind of hard to keep track of the mystery and mostly I was just there to see Goldie and her girlfriend patch things up and her talk to her other friends to get this mystery solved. There's lots of smart girls getting together and solving issues and that's what I really like about Goldie Vance. The next thing that I read was kind of a dud and a disappointment. It's I Am Young which has been in a lot of best of lists for graphic novels in 2018. It follows different storylines so there's like four different stories going on and we keep going back and forth between all of them. The main one follows this couple that gets together, breaks up, gets together, like has issues, gets together and they are bonded by music and specifically the Beatles. I like that this tried different things. Every story had a distinct look and design and drawing style, but I didn't really see how the stories went together or if they were supposed to go together. I was kind of confused by the other stories other than the main like love story. I just didn't see how it all went together. It kind of confused me more um, than enlightened me. I would pass on this one. I wouldn't recommend it, I don't think. The next thing I wanted to talk about is The Unwanted, which is Don Brown's new graphic nonfiction work. He's well known for all of his graphic nonfiction stories that he's written. He's written one about Katrina that I've read before, and he also has one about the Dust Bowl that I have not read. This one came on my radar because it won at the Youth Media Awards for ALA Midwinter. It's about the Syrian refugee crisis, which is a topic I'm interested in and I've been reading about lately. It really looked at the refugee crisis from the macro level, so not really focusing on personal stories, but looking at kind of like the numbers and stats that make up this really huge issue and problem that we're facing. I also really enjoyed enjoyed his illustrations. I always do. I just think that the way that they look um, really fits kind of like the story and like the ruggedness of the issues that they are dealing with. I think Escape from Syria, which was my favorite graphic novel that I read in 2018, accomplished a lot more concerning the refugee crisis than this book did. It had the same kind of stats and factual information, but it also had a personal story that really connected me and drove the message home of why refugees need to be heard and seen. And I think this lacked that a little bit. It lacked the personal touch. And then the last graphic novel that I read was Real Friends by Shannon Hale. This is a memoir. It focuses on Shannon Hale's elementary school years and her developing friendships with different people and how those friendships were tested over time, how she had issues with different girls, how she used her storytelling and her love for writing to get over hurdles and issues that she was having with her friends. She used it as a way to bond with them and to play, but she also used it as a way to grow from those experiences and to just be like, if I don't have them, I still have my imagination and my writing. I think it was very truthful how she depicted elementary school age friendships. Um, like, I remember those days. They weren't good days. You were always like, are you my friend or are you not my friend? And you were so worried about how people saw you and who was was actually your friend. She looked at all that really well. I think in this book people were a lot meaner than I, I personally remember them. Like violence too, like there was violence in this book that I didn't necessarily expect Shannon to be facing from her peers and her sister. I mean if that's her experience then I, I understand it but I, I personally did not experience that. So she went through some tough times. At the end she explains kind of like what's fiction and what's her real memory of these events. And so I would say read the ending as well. She has like a few pages of notes about her process and how she 
got this together. I also will say I really, really love the artwork. It's the same person who does her series The Princess in Black. It's by the same person who illustrated this book. So I really like the style of Le Yuen Pham's art. It's very cute, kind of cartoony style, which I like. Kind of reminds me of Raina Telgemeier a little bit. And then let's talk about fiction books. And one, I might make a whole video and just read to you bad writing out loud. <laughs> that came from The Night Olivia Fell, which is a new thriller. The plot of it sounded pretty interesting of like a mom trying to figure out who might have murdered her pregnant daughter and she fell over a bridge and she's finding justice for her daughter. A good setup in my opinion. Really badly executed in the writing and in the characters and in the very dull plot. The biggest issues here are definitely that writing. I would literally stop reading and then turn to my boyfriend and read sentences out loud to him and just be like, how does this actually make sense to this person? How how can you comprehend the sentence? It does not make sense. The metaphors she used and just how she made everything so dramatic in the writing, it just did not jive with me. And yeah, I might make a video where I read some of these really, really bad sentences now that this book's been published and I can read the finished copy and see if anything's been changed. The characters to me were really forgettable and their interactions were so convenient to, you know, make this plot happen and the ending happen. The redeeming quality here is how much fun I had turning around and reading the bad sentences to my boyfriend out loud. And that's why I finished this book, just because I wanted to keep reading these poorly constructed sentences out loud. And last but not least, I wanted to talk about On the Come Up by Angie Thomas, which was a really, really great read. I really enjoyed my experience listening to this on audiobook. I think the audiobook narrator, Bonnie Turpin, did such a great job and she conveyed like all of the feelings, all of the relationships, all of the interactions, the dialogue, the humor so well in the audiobook version and I've just been looking for more things that she's narrated because I loved her performance in On the Come Up so much. I really love the characters in this book and I think that's what carries the story here is how much you want to learn about them and you want to root for them and how much you value kind of their interactions with each other like in pairs of twos and threes. They're very genuine and I think that's what Angie Thomas writes so well. I think she creates really three-dimensional characters and she creates stories that we don't really get a lot um, in fiction and I really valued my experience reading and learning about her characters. I also really loved the story and the musical and rapping part of the story. There's real rapping in this book and again the narrator did such a great job performing that. Just the story of our main character Brie wanting to be a rapper and wanting to you know be such so good at freestyle and wanting to get this record deal for the future of her family. It's, I think, a story and a moral that kids will see themselves in, that they have a dream and they're trying so hard to reach that dream. And, you know, things get in the way, but you have to stay true to yourself and to your family. I think those are all messages that teens would really come to. So I really, really enjoyed On the Come Up. I think I might have enjoyed it more than The Hate You Give. Don't tell anyone. And it might have been the audiobook that just completely made the story for me. So that is all that I have for you for all the fiction books and graphic novels that I've read lately. If you want to read any of these or if you've read any of these, let me know in the comments and I'll see you in my next video. Bye bye.